are some of the things that people post on YouTube and Facebook and some of these social media platforms, are they actually true? Or are they just trying to get you to watch? Stay tuned. What's going on guys? Ugh, I just want to get on here and do a little video. It's probably going to be one of my daily vlogs. So I know I told you I'd keep it, uh, try to keep it less than 20 minutes uh, or five to 10. This might be one of those 20 minute ones. I'm going to try to make it as quick as possible. But uh, I just wanted to get on here and I've been watching a few videos on YouTube and, and stuff like that of um, uh, people saying uh, how much money you can make and all that stuff and uh, so I just wanted to I'm not saying they're wrong but eh, some of it I just I just don't believe uh, especially with somebody that has the experience like I do uh, I'm not saying I'm the most experienced but uh, but I have been doing this for about three years, and uh, and I've been in trucking for 20, so or close to it. So, so I know a little bit about the transportation industry. Uh, so, uh, not gonna give out any names or anything like that. But uh, I saw a video a while ago that. And I, I think they're just getting started uh, in making the video, so it hasn't actually been the whole 30 days yet. But um, but they are saying uh, thirty thousand dollars in 30 days. Can it be done? Uh, I guess we just have to wait and see. Uh, I'm on. I'm gonna continue to to watch their uh, videos and and see if uh, if it if they actually done it. Uh, if they do, great. Um, but I'm going to give you my opinion and I'm also going to give you my opinion of why I think it cannot be done legally now it can be done question is legally that's the big thing so uh, can you make $30,000 in 30 days uh, I don't think so I could be wrong but I just honestly don't think so and I'll fix to tell you why. So, you got a lot of different scenarios that plays out in this. And I know I got the sun in y'all's eyes, and hopefully it won't bother y'all too bad. So, oh, uh, we're going to base this. And this is, I mean, absolutely the greatest scenario that you could imagine. And whenever I give y'all the price, uh, for those of you that have been doing this for a while, <laughs> you're going to know that, that that that's not the, the rates and all that stuff. So, we're going to base it on, let's see, hold on, let's pick up a piece of metal in my driveway. So, we're going to base it on $2 a mile. Y'all know that's not going to happen. Every once in a while, you might get lucky and get one for that price, but you ain't going to stay consistent on that price for 30 days. So, and this is an RV transport. So, $2 a mile. Let's just say uh, 2,200 miles. So, that's a pretty good long trip. All right. So... Uh, what, $2 a mile, 2,200 miles, that's $4,400. And keep in mind, guys, these are gross. This is not what you're going to bring home 
or put in your pocket or anything like that. This is gross. This is before fuel, uh, maintenance, uh, anything like that. Taxes, insurance, truck payment. This is before all of that. So, $4,400 in one week. To do that trip, so you say on a best case scenario that you average 700 miles a day. Most time that's not going to happen, but let's just say. So 1,700 miles a day, That's we'll go a little over uh, 700 miles a day just to... Oh, I had a rabbit just run out right out in front of me. But, um, so we'll go just a little bit over 700 miles a day. So that way we can round it up to the 2200. Because 7 times 3, or 700 times 3 is 2100. So, I don't know exactly what you have to round it up to, but, uh, but a little over 700 miles a day. So say you do, um, 2200 miles in 3 days. All right, and and don't get me wrong, that can be done legally, but I mean everything has to go perfect, and I mean perfect. So, twenty two hundred miles in three days. So that would be uh, forty four hundred dollars in three days, and if you figure it up, oh, uh, so say if you got another. So then you would have to get a backhaul, and this is the key. Uh, you're not always going to get a backhaul uh, and, and not keep that same rate and keep that same uh, distance every single time. I mean, like I said, this, these, what I'm telling you is best case scenario. I mean, everything just goes perfect. So, so you get a backhaul, $2 a mile coming right back to indiana not gonna happen not every time and honestly i don't think you're gonna get a backhaul for two dollars a mile honestly so so that would bring your uh for six days uh really six and a half because you got to count in uh probably seven because guys you got to count in fuel or stop time to uh, get fuel you got to uh, count in um uh, your pre-trip hooking up unhooking your 30 minute break um i mean you got to take all that stuff under consideration oh uh, so we're gonna say seven days all right oh uh, within those seven days you're gonna have to take a 34 hour restart oh uh, now you might get a little bit above the seven days if you, if you got on your recap if it rolls over but i mean you're allowed to work 70 hours in an eight-day period, and this is legally. And and uh, and I want to uh, also stress on one little thing real quick. Whenever I talk about legally, if you are running a dually, and and uh, and honestly, whether or not you're running a dually or not, uh, being that you're on a backhaul, because the only way you can make this work is you'd have to be loaded constantly. Uh, so you would have to log constantly so so uh so you'd have to take a 34 hour restart uh, pretty much every week now you can get by with it for if you got so many hours it rolls over from the from the previous eight day eighth day and uh but i mean you're not going to keep that consistent for 30 days so you take off 34 hours that's a day and a half so that's what a uh, day and a half three days uh that's six days off of your 30 automatically that you're automatically having to shut down so now you just narrowed it down to what 24 days so thirty thousand in 24 days so uh oh uh, so now you get so you, you get unloaded you get loaded right back, pretty much in the same spot, coming back to Indiana, same spot. And then as soon as you get unhooked, you grab you another one, going right back to 2,200 miles or so. Uh, and then whenever you get that delivered, you get pretty much drop, hook. And I mean, that's pretty much the only way this works, drop, hook, constantly. 
and um, and do that consistently for 30 days. So now you got, um, say, your 34 hour restart. The during that time, you're probably going to get hung up throughout that 30 days, uh, arriving at the shipper on a weekend. So you're probably not going to be able to, you're going to have to sit and take your 34 hour restart and wait till Monday morning to deliver. Um, that's probably going to happen. It may not, but more than likely it will. Uh, let's see here. As far as logging, uh, this, uh, this series of trips legally, so you got 15 minutes for your pre-trip. So uh, we're going to say you drive your consistent 11 hours throughout that day. You're going to maximize your clock to, I mean, perfect. So you're going to drive 11 hours every single day for pretty much that 30 days. So now you got that 11 hours. Then you got on-duty time that you got to count. Because driving time and on-duty, that counts towards your 70 hours in an 8-day period before you have to take a 34-hour th uh, restart. So 15 minutes pre-trip, all right. 15 minutes uh, fuel. You got to you got to pre-trip every single day. Um, the uh, I think I've said before one time that you uh, that you can log your post-trip off duty. I've heard that you got to log it on duty. Uh, I'm not really sure about that. The way I've always done it and the way it was whenever I started trucking is you could log your post trip off duty. But uh, so we're not even going to count that 15 minutes. So 15 minutes pre trip, 15 minutes of fuel. You're going to have to pretty much get fuel every other day uh, or every day, uh, maybe every other day. Um, let's see. Your uh, delivery, uh, you're going to have to log 15 minutes. Uh, on duty for that because you're working uh, that and that's a minimum guys uh, you could have to log 30 minutes so dependent um, but because I know I mean the whole time that you're there I mean yeah technically you're not working but uh, whenever you're unhooking whenever you're uh, getting your paperwork signed all that stuff that's work that's on duty time but we're just going to say 15 minutes all right, what about whenever you hook up? All right, so that's on duty time again. So, uh, and that, guys, I mean, I'm sorry. Some people may log it 15 minutes. I'm going to tell you right now you're wrong. Uh, hooking up should be at least 30 minutes. I mean, that's just me, a minimum. And I'm going to tell you why. Because there's no way that you can pull into the yard go around find your camper uh do the inspection on your camper take your pictures like you're supposed to get hooked up and get out of the yard in 15 minutes there's no possible way if you want to sit here and call me a liar you go right ahead there's no possible way you can do all that in 15 minutes they um so 30 minutes so now we didn't add it an hour of work time onto our day so now we've done 11 hours of drive time an hour of on duty time that's 12 hours all right so we're going to break that down we're going to we're going to say 11 and a half to 11 uh, hours and 45 minutes somewhere in between um, just to say maybe we didn't get fuel every single day so 11 and a half hours between 11 and a half to 11 hours and 45 minutes every single day that's 70 hours in a six day period pretty much give or take 69 to i think it was 70 and a half so 70 hours in a six day period so pretty much every six days you're going to, have to take a restart do a 34 hour restart so and guys like i said this is doing it legal so you do that and there's just, I mean, honestly, guys, I just don't see no way it can be done. So three days out there, three days back, and then you're going to have to shut down and do a 34-hour restart before you can go and do it all over again. And um, 
So say, so a trip out there that, and like I said, this is based on $2 a mile at 2,200 miles uh, for that one trip. Then you get, on your back haul, you get $2 a mile, 2,200 miles back. So that's $8,800 in a six day period. Then you got to do it all over again. Now $8,800 in a, in a, in a, basically a week. And then you do that four weeks, so that'd be what? Uh, 88, I'm not real good at math, guys, so, uh, let's see. Eight times four is 32. Uh, so, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think I figured it up. If everything went perfect, I think it would come up to about 35,000. But like I said, that's running consistently. That's running legal. That's not taking into consideration your 34-hour restart. And, I mean, that's just, if everything goes 100% perfect, you got a load going out, and you got a load coming right back every single trip at $2 a mile. No way. No way. You can call me a liar if you want to. I'm telling you, no way. Oh, um, so you got that one, and then I've seen others on here that, I mean, they say that you can make $10,000 a week and all this stuff and RV transport. <laughs> you guys, in this day of time, you can't do it. Um, and then another thing, what they don't tell you, and I think the reason that a lot of them do this is just to get you to watch their video. So that way you'll watch it and see if it can be done. Well, yes, I want you to watch my video and I would love for you to watch it all the way through. But I'm not gonna sit here and misinform people that you can get out here and make all this money in RV transport and then you give up your great job, go out here and buy a brand new truck and try to get in this thinking that you're gonna make $10,000 a week or $30,000 a month or whatever. And a lot of people, they, that's what they do. They'll sit there and say, well, hey, you can make this much. Well, what they're not telling you is that even though you might get lucky and make that $30,000 in a month, Guys, that's not what you're going to bring home. That's not what you're going to put back and, and have to pay your bills with. Guys, you can break down $30,000 a month. You're going to spend at least 40% of that on fuel. At least. So, so we're going to figure, we're going to add in fuel which is about 40%. And then we're gonna take maintenance and breakdown. And honestly, I don't think 10% is enough to put back for maintenance and breakdown. You should be putting back at least five to 10% for, for maintenance and then probably another 10% for, for breakdown, for emergency fund. That's what I mean by breakdown, emergency fund. So, if you do all that, then, so we're just gonna round it up to 50%. So 50% of that $30,000 is $15,000 in one month. All right, now, you gotta take out insurance. You gotta take out, you're gonna be spending money on the road as far as eating, because you got to have food. Um. Some people are probably going to want to get hotels, but we're not going to count hotels. We're going to say sleeping in your truck the old-fashioned way. Uh, you're going to get out there and you're going to rough it. So we're not going to count hotels. So you got to have food. You got insurance to pay. You got your truck payment to pay. 
if if you have a brand new truck you still own on the truck me i it'd probably benefit me better because i don't have a truck payment but if you do have a truck payment guys i imagine that's especially a new one that's probably over a thousand dollars a month oh uh, let's see what else oh uh, let's see what did i say all right i'm not going to say maintenance because the maintenance was included in that 50 percent so food insurance um we're not going to count fuel because fuel is included in that 50 percent um taxes taxes are going to kill you so that fifteen thousand, you might put I don't know. What do y'all think? Between truck payment, insurance, food, all that stuff, what, five thousand dollars a month? So now you just brought that five thousand down to ten thousand. Yes, guys, in one month. That's still great money. That, that is real good money but like i said that's if, if everything goes perfect i mean you stay loaded constantly and um at two dollars a mile i just i just honestly don't see it but anyway guys you got to sit down and figure up all this stuff um uh, most time when people tell you they're making so much money they're probably not giving you the the actual breakdown of all the costs of uh, fuel maintenance. And like I said, guys, you putting that many miles on your truck, I mean, you figure that's going to be an, I mean, if you, if you do your maintenance on your truck like you should, like I do, every 10,000 miles, you're looking at an oil change on um, what? every two weeks so so you got to take out for that and if you're not at home to do it because you're constantly having to be on the road then you're going to have to stop somewhere and pay them to do it so now it's probably going to be double of what it would normally cost if you done it yourself and as far as uh putting that many miles you're going to have something go wrong I, I just i just don't see a trip like that loaded constantly for 30 days i don't see everything going perfect oh uh, you're you're gonna have something go wrong that's gonna shut you down at least for a few hours uh whether it be a flat tire a blowout and and this i mean it may not even be on your truck it could be on the camper um uh, i just don't see it oh uh, when then whenever you're getting uh getting service done in your truck that's downtime that's eating into your time oh uh, just don't see it guys but that's just my honest opinion not saying it can't be done yeah, like i said if everything went 100 percent perfect and you stayed loaded 100 percent of the time going and coming at that two dollars a mile yeah it can be done maybe but guys you know it never works out like that so but again that's just my honest opinion uh i try to get on here and i try to give people i'm trying to think how to how to say this uh, i try to give people honest answers uh, I try to let people know what I would want people to let me know. Um, I just, I don't like people like giving misinformation out here. Um, I just, I don't. Because if I was to sit here and get in and tell you all oh, you can make this much money, and you believe me, and then you don't take under consideration all the other things, maintenance, truck payment, fuel, all that stuff you're just going by what that number i said and maybe and say i said that that was your gross well that's what you're going that's what most people probably think that you're going to make then you're going to get out here into this job 
and you're going to fail. You're going to go bankrupt. You're going to lose everything. And I don't want to see that happen to nobody. I don't want to see it happen to me, and I don't want to see it happen to you. So, I try to give the most honest answer I can with the experience that I got. Um, if I don't know something, I'm going to tell you. Uh, if I don't think it can be done, I'm going to tell you, uh, like I'm telling you now. So, just watch out for, for people like that that's giving misinformation. So, but I just want to get on here, make that video, and I don't think I've ever touched on anything like that before. I think I have a little bit, but maybe not this in depth. But, but guys, if y'all like this, uh, and hopefully maybe I'll woke some people up, I guess you could say, uh, that's maybe just that's maybe wanting to get into this. For those of you that, that have been doing this for a while, guys, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And and I'm pretty sure you're going to agree with me. So, anyway, uh, I'm going to get off here. So, guys, if y'all don't mind, y'all hit that like, share, subscribe button. Uh, it really helps me out. helps my channel grow. And uh, helps me keep passing on, hopefully, good content to you guys. So uh, all I do is I, I try my best and share my, my life experiences with you uh, and give my honest opinion. So anyway, we'll catch you on the next one. As always, y'all be safe. Semper Fi.